All right, we're here with Daniel Magazoo. Appreciate you coming on, man. He runs Mulch Masters as well as Ride the Wave. Mulch Masters is a mulching company, and Ride the Wave helps home service businesses do marketing inside of Facebook groups, which is a very unique marketing channel, not one that we've heard of uh, here on the workbench. So excited to dive into that. And Daniel, appreciate you coming on. How are you doing today? Yeah, thanks for having me, Brian. I'm excited to talk about. Mulch Masters and Facebook groups. Great. Cool, man. So why don't we just kick it off with a little intro? Can you give us a bit of background on who you are and the businesses that you run? Yeah, sure. So Mulch Masters was the first business I started. Uh, I started that freshman year of college. Um, we got sent home from college because of COVID. And me and a few of my buddies were just sitting around bored and we were like, we had all done landscaping uh, the prior year as our summer jobs. And we're like, let's start a landscaping business. So we got together, uh, posted a few ads in our local Facebook groups communities, um, asking people if they needed landscaping, got a few, got a few hits and it all, all started rolling from there. Um, so every summer, um, one college summer break started, we would, um, start up the mulching business and um, this 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 past year i graduated and i wanted to see how big i could sort of take mulch masters so we had six full-time employees four part-time employees um and it really took off this summer uh did about two hundred thousand in revenue and eighty thousand in profit so that's just a little bit about the mulch masters backstory <laughs> Let's dive into that a little more. Can you walk us through the story of like starting that business and specifically things like how'd you get your first customers? How'd you get the equipment to start servicing those customers? Really just walk us through kind of those initial early weeks getting the business off the ground. Usually when a customer reaches out about a mulching job, uh, they'll send you a text saying they're interested. You'll show up to their house. They'll tell you which beds they want mulched. And um, you'll need to figure out how much mulch you'll need to mulch the property. Um, you also need to determine um, if they want the beds edged and weeded. So usually you price those out hourly. Um, and you go from there. So the homeowner will walk you, walk you around the property, show you exactly what they want done, and then it's your job as the business owner to figure out how much mulch and how long it's going to take you. So usually in the mulching industry, you mulch it per yard of mulch. So that's a yard is uh, the amount of mulch that you'll need. Um, typical houses are between like four and 10 yards of mulch. You price it out per yard, usually around $120 a yard. And then you charge an additional hourly rate for the weeding and edging. So my company charged $60 an hour for weeding and edging, but you can charge a lot more. Um, so then when you actually show up to do the job, um, the things you need to do beforehand are call the mulch company, um, order the mulch to the property, um, and have them dump it in their driveway. And then the first thing you're gonna do when you get there is start by weeding and edging all the beds. So that's called uh, bed prep. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, weeding, you just use a hoe or hand pick, hand pick all the weeds, go around all the beds, make sure they're all cleaned up. And then you start edging the beds. So there's a specific tool that you can use to edge all beds. Um, it's pretty easy, you just step on it and remove the dirt and just creates a nice line and definition uh, over all the beds. And then once that's all done, you start you start with the mulching, um, which is pretty easy. You use a pitchfork, grab the mulch, fill up a wheelbarrow, bring the wheelbarrow to the bed, dump it out and just spread it. Um, so it's a pretty simple service that you can start offering, um, pretty easy to learn. Um, pretty easy to do yourself. Cool. Yeah, makes sense. Um, when you were getting started, what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced? Um, 
So initially, probably the biggest challenges were estimating jobs, uh, figuring out how long each job is going to take. And one problem that we had was consistently underpricing jobs because we would be like, oh, this is only going to take us three or four hours when in reality it was like an eight or nine hour job. Um, so learning how to predict how long a job is going to take definitely was a learning curve. Also, something that you learn early on is that you need to communicate really really professionally with your customers, um, update them on when you're coming to do the job, make sh making sure they're happy with the work. If they're not happy with the work, how can you fix it? Um, so you learn a lot about how to, um, you learn a lot about customer service and how to ensure your customer is happy. So I say the two biggest struggles early on were learning how to price and learning how to communicate effectively with uh with your clients yeah pricing and creating quotes i know is always a challenge because every job is different and kind of formatting and standardizing that pricing can be can be tough um and then yeah the professional communication is a big one you want to make sure that even if you're young like you were still in college creating a business that the customer feels that um you know you're, you're offering a professional service and you're going to take care of them because it's a small detail but it definitely has a big impact so let's talk about ride the wave so my understanding is that ride the wave is essentially an agency or a service where you help other home services businesses market inside of facebook groups is that right yeah that's that's uh 100 correct cool so to t that's that, that's the first business i've heard of that um I've personally been in Facebook groups and every time I've been somewhat self-promotional about whatever I'm working on, I find that typically that's not well received in the Facebook group. So when I saw Ride the Wave, I, I know the power of Facebook groups. I also know that it can be challenging to quote unquote sell inside of those groups. Um, so before we dive into the tactics you use, tell us more about why. Why did you go and start you know, a service like this um, of all things? Yeah, so... So okay, let me let me start from like the beginning. So this was Facebook groups was how I initially got my first landscaping job. And mm -hmm. this past summer, it was my only really marketing funnel. I, um, my company didn't have a website, um, didn't do any Facebook ads or Google ads, just did all my marketing through Facebook groups. And I was thinking to myself after the summer ended, I was like, why do no other businesses use Facebook groups the way that I'm using Facebook groups? Let me sort of see um, if my strategy can work for some other businesses. So I reached out to my friend Chris on Twitter, who owned a pretty um, high-end custom pergola company that I thought would be perfect for Facebook groups. Um, I was like, you want to test this out? I'll I'll do it for you, um, and it worked really well. So I had some like, uh, what's it called? I had some proof that it would work, so I started offering it out to more and more businesses. And um, essentially, the strategy is to not post like direct ads in the Facebook groups. You really want to add like a personal and introductory feel to the to the message that you're posting so that people don't get upset that you're just posting about your business. Um, you want to make it feel like, um, like you're connecting with the community is essentially the goal. Cool. All right. So let's dive into the tactics there. Uh, when we talk about Facebook groups, what type of groups are you typically in for your clients? Okay. So, what you want to do is join the local community Facebook groups. So whatever your service area is, you want to join um, the town communities within your service area. So if you live in uh, Franklin, Massachusetts, and you serve a 20 mile radius around Franklin, Massachusetts, you want to join all of the town communities 
within that radius. So the Facebook group in Franklin is called All About Franklin Mass. And then you would just join all of those community groups within your service area. Um, so those are the groups you're looking for. And then you also want to read the rules of the of the Facebook group. A lot of the groups won't actually allow promotional um, promotional uh, posts. So you just have to read the rules and make sure that you only join groups that you, where you're allowed or if you are going to join groups where they're not allowed, you can still make an impact, but you just can't directly advertise in them. Okay, so in the local area of Facebook groups, I'm in Santa Monica, so I'd want to find the Santa Monica groups. And is, that, is are most of these groups just called just Santa Monica? Is it parents of Santa Monica? What what specifically should I look for in, in terms of the group names? So... It's usually the town name followed by community or all about town name or um, something related to that. But basically to find the groups, all you have to do is go onto Facebook, click on the groups tab and just search up your town name and the most popular ones usually come out at the top. So you can join the groups. You, it might take some trial and error to find the ones that are the most active, um, but you can just join the groups and see the ones that pe where people in your community are engaging in the most, and those are usually the ones that you want to post in. Um, you also can kind of tell when you're searching for the groups. It will say how many posts a day are going on. Um, you usually want the groups to be private because the private groups don't have a ton of spam in them. Um, and usually for it to be successful, if they have over 2,500 members is usually a good start looking for groups. All right, so I'm looking for private groups with over 2,500 people, and I can just search for whatever my service area is on Facebook in the groups tab and should find the most popular groups in my area. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, let's get into the content. So when I join the Santa Monica community group um, in my area or whatever area our listeners are in, um, what should they post? They just say, hey, I have a mulch business or hey, I do plumbing or what's the approach content wise? Yeah, so this might be the best uh, time for me to share my screen and show you actually. Cool. Um, does, does that work with you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. So just starting off, um, uh, we're looking at one of my clients, um, Daryl Lindy. Um, this is his his wife's account. They own a, a residential awnings and commercial sign business, um, but it doesn't matter. The, um, the applications um, apply to any sort of business. So right now we're in the All Things Plymouth Mass Group. So this is just a town within Daryl's service area, uh, Plymouth Mass. Um, and basically, when you join the group, you're just going to make an introductory message saying, hey, town friends, and then you're going to write an introduction. Introduce yourself to the group, tell them who you are, um, and this helps um, boost engagement because it feels like people aren't directly talking to a business. They're speaking to another human being and that they want to support you. Um, go into talking a little bit about the business and telling interested people to uh, fill out a quote. So you always want to include personal photo as well as uh, super high quality, unedited pictures of your product um, so that people get a sense of what you do and who you are. Um, and these these uh, posts are usually very well received. They get decent engagement. 
um, 73 likes and nine comments. So it, they're, it's free advertising to a group of 15,000 people, um, which is pretty unheard of. Um, but basically what the main points are, you wanna be personable, tell a quick story about yourself, um, share a little bit about your business, what makes you stand out, have a call to action, only one call to action, asking them, them to fill out a form, call you or however you wanna be contacted. And then the pictures, honestly, probably the most important part, high quality picture, one personal picture of you with your family or you doing something you enjoy so that people know who you are. And then professional pictures from, your, from previous work you've done, uh, very important as well. Yeah, I really th that that tactic makes sense, right? You're not just coming in and saying buy my stuff. You're doing a true, authentic personal introduction, and part of being a person and a, a part of a family, and in this case, is owning a business. And so it, it does definitely resonate as quite authentic. So let's talk about conversion. So um, we do a great post like this, really solid engagement. In this case, we have a jot form. Um, talk to me about how we go from this great post top of funnel to then converting these folks into paid customers for your clients. Great. Yeah. So this is just an example of, of Daryl's form, but you want to make it super brief and easy for them to fill out. Um, just a quick name, phone number, email, and then submit. Um, from there, you're going to want to I set up automations for some of my clients where it will send an automated text message uh, so that they're reached out to right away. Um, but the most important thing that I've learned from this is being super responsive to your leads. So responding to your leads in less than an hour is critical to converting them into customers. Let's talk about tools. So you mentioned the jot form. We have that here. Uh, you mentioned the automated follow-up text. Talk to me about how you manage that follow-up text as well as the other tools you're using on the back end to power ride the wave. Yeah, sure. Um, so to set up an automated text, um, you have to use Zapier. Um, Zapier is an, um, an automation tool that allows you to set up custom automations. So uh, Daryl's business, I think uses open phone. So basically what we do is it's, it's uh, the automation is set up. So anytime that this form is submitted, um, it sends this number to open phone. It creates a new contact for their business and sends out a automated text message saying, hey, this is Daryl from AA Awning. Um, you just filled out our Facebook's group form. Um, we thank you for that. Um, what are you interested in? Um, what service are you interested in from us? And it automatically sends the text out and you just have to deal with the replies. Great. Now let's talk about results, whether it's with this specific client or more generally, can you talk to us about what type of new customer acquisition or revenue you're driving through for your clients through these Facebook groups? Yeah, sure. So um, we've been tracking the data um, pretty, pretty, um, what's it called? We make it a point to track how well the, the groups do. So, um, a few weeks ago, we were averaging 5.7 leads in Facebook groups per client. Um, that number's dropped to a little, little below five. So like, I think it's like 4.8 leads um, per week per client. Um, so you can expect um, around five leads a week if you're posting in Facebook groups pretty viciously. Um, and then as far as conversion rate, it varies from business to business. Um, I would say about 75% of people will respond to the text outreach. So 
uh, right off the bat, 25% of people are not even responding to the initial message. Um, from there, um, at least for my mulching business, around 50% of the people who fill out the form will request a quote, um, like an in-person quote, and then around 50% of those people close. Um, for a lot of my cleaning businesses, that the, the success of the Facebook group leads is around 15%. Um, but for businesses that do in-person estimates, it's a lot higher, um, probably around 30% on average. I don't have the exact numbers on the close rate of the leads, but um, I would say anywhere on a low end of 10% on a, to a high end of 35 from the leads in the Facebook groups. Great. Um, yeah, super insightful, man. Really good, unique marketing approach. To, to wrap it up and summarize, let's, let's pretend I'm a, you know, I run Brian's Plumbing here in Santa Monica, and you had to give me the 101 on how I can capitalize on Facebook groups. Can you break that down for me, just the simple steps I need to, to get started on, on Facebook group marketing? Yeah, so here is exactly what you're going to need to do. Uh, Brian from Santa Monica, you're going to need to join every single local community group in your service area. You're then going to want to sit down and spend an hour writing up a insightful and thoughtful um, post that you can post in the communities. That's not just an, a business advertisement. Um, tell a story about yourself, um, share a story about how you help the community, that sort of thing. So you're going to want to write, write, write your post, and then you're going to want to think of, uh, of a personal picture you want to add to the post as well as five to seven other, other uh, pictures that you want to add to the post as well. So then you have your post already. You're then going to want to figure out how you want leads to contact you. Um, if you want to keep it organized, I recommend using JotForm to create a simple um, information request form, or you can just have people reach out to your phone number. Um, so now that you have the post ready, it's now time to post in all the groups you've joined. Um, and from there, you can just either create new posts or um, service the leads that are that will be coming in. Great. It's great, Daniel. Love the approach. Uh, what's next for you? Do you want to keep running Mulch Masters and growing Ride the Wave? Or are you going to solely focus on the Ride the Wave? Um, I know it's still super early days for you, but what are you thinking for the next couple of years as you grow both these businesses? Yeah, so... That's a good question. So uh, I've suspended my Mulch Masters operations to focus solely on Ride the Wave. I really like where it's going and what we're doing. Um, we at Ride the Wave are trying to develop lifelong business relationships with our clients um, by developing um, unique uh, growth solutions. So right now, our growth solution is Facebook groups, but we are trying to develop new and outside the box ways of marketing for our clients. Um, the one that I'm trying to develop right now is doing personalized door hangers um, that people can hang up um, in around the neighborhood. So what that means is just like um, having a door hanger of all your services and then attaching a sticky note to the door hanger um, of a handwritten quick note from the owner saying, um, hey, we were in the neighborhood, would love to service you. So figuring out a way to do that. Um, really just trying to think of uh, outside the box solutions to uh, help my home service clients market their company. That's great, man. 
Well, yeah, love the approach. Love the unique marketing channels. Daniel, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, where can folks find you on uh, your website, social media handles? Um, where can people connect with you? Yeah, so people can, it's easiest to connect with me on X. Um, my handle is at Danny Magazoo, uh, and that's spelled M-A-G-A-Z-U. Um, you can also check out our website. Uh, it's www.ridethewave.info. But those are probably the two best places to uh, find and learn about my services. All right. Thanks for coming on, Danny. Have a good one. Yeah, thank you, Brian.